hello and welcome to my channel. If this is the first video you've ever seen of mine, um, my name is Catherine. I live in Melbourne, Australia and maybe you clicked over in other parts of my channel and you see all of these different videos like organizing or minimizing things or large family stuff or driving lessons. Um, but I've been thinking a lot about my channel lately and my husband says to me, stop doing talking head videos. People don't always want to just see your face telling some kind of story. Do like videos that show people things. People want to see stuff that you're doing. So I don't know, like lots of people like different things. Like I said, my name is Catherine. I live in Australia. I'm married. I have 10 children that I homeschool. So you've got me now at like, we're probably approaching like eight o'clock at night. I have two lights in my hobby room and one's right above my head. So it's giving all sorts of wonderful, amazing lighting opportunities. But despite that, let's get back to my other thought I had. I've been thinking about my channel and I think my channel, which is called Inspiring Simple, is really a channel for me, but a channel that I hope encourages other people too. So my channel really is, I guess, about personal development. So I was deathly afraid of driving a manual car. I didn't have to learn to drive a manual car, but I was so afraid of it that I thought, you know what, stop being afraid and just learn. So there's a ton of videos of me learning how to drive a manual. And I'd say pretty much, I only stole like one time every time I drive. And then my lovely friend says, just video yourself. People will get to know your personality and just video yourself. But I turn the camera on and I talk for three minutes and do you really see what I'm like? I don't know. So with all that out of the way, I thought I would just show you what I'm up to because I am doing something that's different to my usual just making quilts. I will explain to you, I guess, my quilting schedule and how I manage to make quilts. If I can work out how to insert photos to a video, I will. Um, but basically the way I am able to quilt and create lots of quilts is by sacrificing sleep sometimes and having a schedule and a routine. And that's actually how I have a relatively tidy and organized home and a good schedule and we get stuff done is from having a schedule, a routine, boundaries, all those kind of things result in us being able to do quite a bit and have an organized home. So I am currently deconstructing a quilt and I've never done this before. So of course, like any other professional YouTuber, I went ahead and like half unpicked a quilt and then suddenly thought maybe I should video this for somebody else who one day needs to deconstruct a quilt. So I will turn the camera around and I will show you what I've done and what I plan on doing and how I'm learning. And I'm also learning that I totally didn't tell you how I managed to quilt. So let's go back to that. One hour a day is quiet time. That's when I can come down here and I can sew for one hour. And then at night, when my younger children go to bed at seven o'clock, I have from seven o'clock to bedtime, my bedtime, to sew. But I've been trying to get up earlier. I still mostly suck at it. And that means I kind of have to go back up by like 8.30. So what's that? From like one to two, and then for an hour and a half at night, I can sew. On Sundays, it's a day of rest. I choose to sew. I may get three or four hours to do it. And I can also sometimes motivate myself to get up at five o'clock in the morning and sew at five o'clock in the morning. That's when you really prove that you're a committed quilter, yeah? So anyhow, enough talking head. 
I'll turn you around and I'll talk to you again in a second. This is my daughter Grace's quilt that I made for her, but I'm deconstructing it because I used a vintage sheet on the back and the vintage sheet got a rip in it. So my daughter came to me, said there's a rip in the sheet and I had a look and even though vintage sheets are absolutely wonderful and feel like butter, I realized that not only was there that rip just from the sheet being so worn, um, that the sheet was really gonna give out in other areas. So I discussed trying to patch it. I had used just one whole single bed sheet for the backing, wasn't pieced at all. And then I messaged a lovely friend of mine and she said that the quilts that her children loved so much, they loved to death and wore at the backs, she's actually unpicked them and re-quilted them with a new backing. And if your kid loves the quilt that much, then maybe it's worth doing that. So I'm like, well, I could at least improve on the quilting because this is one of my earlier quilts where I sort of really had no idea what I was doing. So it's just straight line quilting and I have slowly been unpicking it. First, I removed all of the binding, which was relatively quickish. And I tell you what, I'm glad I did because this was back before I sort of learned to just cut three inch strips of binding and you know, like I said, it's an earlier quilt. So it does take a fairish amount of time because I just get, if I can show you, I get the unpicker in, cut those threads, pull it a bit, but I have lines going every which way. Because I did, did straight line quilting across like the white and then, you know, each little bit takes a while. And I have noticed the batting is still in, I reckon, really good condition. I've never done this before. I'm assuming I might have to like pull this batting out and save it for like a cot quilt or something because obviously... Once you've assembled your, done your quilt sandwich, quilted it, you then trim off all your excess. You normally have like a few inches overhanging, if this makes sense to you. Um, but yeah, so, so far I've done over half. I've unpicked over half. I watched two movies while unpicking and it's school holidays. So I have had extra time to unpick like I said, it's like two stitches at a time. Um, and it really shows that you love quilting if you're willing to do this and it doesn't really bother you. So I have this much to go and then I got to work out how to re-quilt it. I own a Juki TL2010Q but I actually quilted this on a like domestic sewing machine, an Elna Alina, I think it's called. So man, you get really strong shoulder muscles wrenching your quilt through a small throated sewing machine. I have recently finished making some quilts. So now let's deconstruct and fix this quilt up. If you have ever done this kind of thing and you could offer sage advice, I did hear that you could just kind of rip the backing off, but I was thinking oh, about all the threads in the bizzo and I just didn't want to. Well, there you go. This is the world's longest video explaining that I'm taking off the back of a quilt and putting on a new one. And I might do a pieced back. I don't know. It's really given me, like, I love the vintage backs because they're just so buttery, but maybe... I'm going to do vintage on the front and newer fabric for the back because, I don't know, maybe it's if your child loves a quilt so much, they're going to like use it tons and tons and you want your quilts to last. So there you go. 
thanks for watching my video feel free to subscribe and i will share more probably quilting sewing self-development how a mother with 10 children lives her life videos in the future so feel free to stick around and i'd love to see you in the next video take care bye